Good to be connected with you once again. This is Mobola Steven, your host on Live World Lives by Mobola Steven. My podcast focuses on self development and personal improvement topics with the occasion of incredible, amazing, expert and professionals who come to the show to share their insights on topics and subjects on personal development and self improvement. Now, if you want to be a guest on my show, right, you can mail me at mobolasteven.o at outlook.com. Then we get connected from there. Today, I have Constanza Roda, who is the founder and CEO of the Art in Health nonprofit at Need Art and co-host of the podcast, As for the Health of It. Hi, Constanza, welcome to the show. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. All right, excited to have you on the show. Constanza, I'm looking forward to your professional insight on today's show, right? So, um, Constanza, I want to ask you this question. What inspired the project Art in Health and Heart Needs Heart? Right? Interesting. Yeah, it's um, it's awesome what we get, what I get to do. Um, do you want me to give you a little like introduction to what it is and how we do it? Sure. Okay. So, um, yeah. So this kind of really started for me when um I was in high school and I was diagnosed with leukemia. Um, and I had 130 weeks of chemotherapy. And as you can imagine, that was a really hard time. You know, it's already hard enough being a teenager and then you sprinkle a little cancer on top of it. And it's, um, there's a lot of heavy emotions and, um, challenges that come along with that. And I was really fortunate in a lot of ways to have access to the arts, um, as a pediatric patient in the United States, most, most pediatric hospitals have, um, activities and, people coming by all the time, um, wanting to play with you or do activity, you know, I had access to the arts as a pediatric patient. Um, and that was a really important part of my healing process because when we go through traumatic experiences, it usually gets encoded in the part of the brain. Um, they get encoded as sensorial memories and we can't necessarily express them verbally. And so we need the arts, like the arts are really kind of the language of, of trauma expression. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like we need them to, uh, we need to express and get those, um, those emotions and process those memories so that we can fully heal and music, movement, writing, um, visual arts. Those were all uh, a way that I healed. And I was very grateful to have access to that. Um, and then I, um, I grew up in California and then I moved to Texas and I started volunteering on an adult cancer unit. And I hadn't been, I'd never been in an adult hospital, much less an Mm -hmm. adult cancer unit. And it was very different than what I had access to. And the first thing I noticed was how many people were alone. I was never alone when I was Mm -hmm. in the hospital. And so many of these people spent weeks and months at a time in the hospital and spent much of their time alone going through the hardest time of their life. Um, there weren't activities. There weren't, the arts weren't present <laughs> in oh, any way. That's awful. Yeah. And <laughs> I just, I was like, this isn't right. <laughs> and so I, I, I am a musician. I studied music um, in college after I finished treatment. I went on to college and studied music and psychology. And I started going room to room and singing for patients. And it was incredibly transformative for the people I was able to work with and for me to be able to give that to them. It was, um, uh, it's hard to articulate. It's hard to articulate in words, the impact of the arts, like you kind of only can express it through the arts. Um, anyway, that was, um, I did that for several years and my patients kept asking for more. They're like, we, need more of this. It's great. You're here once a week, but we really need this every day. And we'd like, other day. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm going to have to work on that. <laughs> and <Wow>. So <laughs> I, um, figured out how to start a nonprofit, um, mm-hmm. in here in San Antonio and learns from other organizations that are working in this space that are working in yeah. arts and health and bringing the arts into healthcare spaces. And so then I started my nonprofit and we hired our, we'd started in uh, end of, just end of November, 2016. So we're just over five years old now. 
um, a month or so after we started, we hired our first visual artist and wow. we've just grown from there. Um, and that's a big part of what we do as well is creating meaningful economic opportunities for local artists, musicians, writers, creatives. Um, our artists are essential in our communities and they're vastly undervalued and um, undercompensated and underemployed. So um, we value their work. And so we pay them for the work that they do. And we're, we're proud that we're able to do that. And like during the pandemic, when all, everyone's gigs dried up <laughs> for many of them, we were their only paycheck <laughs> and uh, we were really blessed to be able to keep all of our artists employed through the pandemic. That was, um, that was a big goal of ours when everything was shut down. Um, anyway, so we bring, we bring arts to the bedside of patients, um, professional musicians playing people's favorite music at their bedside. We bring visual arts of all types, um, to the bedside as well. Sometimes that turns into like window painting to help them mm. personalize their space. Uh, we do writing and poetry, um, as well. And we also do a lot of work with healthcare staff. So we're there for everyone that's in the healthcare environment because everyone is connected and everyone that's is right. impacted by dealing with serious illness and death and so much hard stuff that happens in hospitals. So mm -hmm. we do a lot to support healthcare staff um, as well. And it's, um, you know, patients report lower pain levels, lower anxiety, lower depression depressive symptoms. They report that they're less lonely. And, um, you know, these are, these are interventions that impact patient outcomes and they're not, um, non-pharmaceutical interventions that, um, impact people's health in pretty profound ways. Awesome. You're doing an amazing work. I still that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. Like I said, it's uh, awesome. Great, great, great. That should be fulfilling, right? So I want us to talk about mental illness. What is your understanding, right, of mental illness? Ooh, well, I'm not a mental health expert per se, um, but, you know, from what I understand, it's when um, there's, gosh, I've never thought of like how to, how to define mental illness. <laughs> um, you know, what's your understanding? Yeah. So like when something's going on, um, within a person that is interrupting their having healthy relationships, having, um, a, half, a happy and full life, um, that is either acute or chronic and generally needs some sort of external intervention. Um, and mental illness can have all different types of factors, um, from, uh, nutrition and, um, biology and, uh, relationships and, um, uh, financial toxicity. And there, there's all kinds of different, uh, external and internal factors that contribute to mental illness. And we need to address the whole person when we're addressing mental illness and throughout human history, the way that we, we haven't necessarily had mental health services in our mental health professionals and the way it's, um, formalized now, but, um, the arts and culture and, um, spiritual our spiritual leaders kind of played that function in society for a long time. And uh, there's an ethnologist who studies the role of arts and culture across across cultures and across history. Her name's um, Ellen Dissanayak, and she said that the arts and related activities are processes that humans use to return to psychological and social equilibrium. That when something's out of balance, it's a way that we can kind of regulate and return. Um, return to balance. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of mental illness, you know, anxiety is super prevalent in the United States right now. And some of that, it, part of that is our um, nervous system is dysregulated. And so little, like little minimal stress and stimuli will push us over the edge so that we're, go, we're in hyper arousal all the time. Uh, and the arts play there's there's lots of ways to help regulate the um, nervous system mindfulness um, techniques breathing techniques all that kind of stuff um, but the arts because they're multimodal they involve movement and sensory um, 
involvement and breath and expression and all these things, it's a really powerful way as well to regulate our, um, our nervous system, which is why in study after study, we see that the arts have a, have a pretty, um, profound impact on, on something like anxiety. Oh, great. Good to know. Uh, Pastor, so what's the importance of uh, child health? Would you like to share your insight? Sure. Uh, sure. Um, I mean, I'm happy to share um, from an arts perspective. Um, awesome. Yeah, the, there's lots of studies that arts engagement um, improves um, language development, improves co cognition in children, improves school performance, um, include, uh, improves mental health across, across their lifespan, um, improves social connections, all these things. And uh, as an arts educator, I'm really passionate about equipping um, the next generation with the tools they need to manage the human experience to deal with the human experience. We need expressive tools to help us do that. And unfortunately, a lot of people um, in the West, we kind of divide out like the talented and the not and the untalented. And only the talented people are allowed to sing or dance or draw or anything like that. And we shame people, we shame children um, for you know, drawing a dog that looks like a pig or, um, for not singing in tune or for, you know, dancing off rhythm. And it's like, of course, like no one comes out of the womb with perfect, you know, perfect artistic skills, skills are skills in the arts are something that we can build and develop. And, um, we teach writing and reading in school. Cause it's a basic, we, it's a, we, as a society say, this is a basic need in order to navigate the world. We need to be able to communicate. Um, so with children that take a little bit longer to learn their alphabet or read, we're, we don't tell them, oh, you're probably just not talented in this. And so like, just don't, just don't read, <laughs> just never, just don't learn how to read. No, we take them and we, we, we come alongside them and we break things down a little bit slower to help them build that skill. And the same thing, we, we need to approach the arts in the same way because there's parts of our brain and our minds um, and our implicit memories that are, we can't express verbally we can't express in words because it's not connect not connected directly to that language the broca center of the brain and we need um visual ways to express ourselves we need movement we need sound um there there there's this whole language that expresses a huge part of who we are um that everyone should know and have basic literacy in arts literacy is incredibly important and it starts in childhood because what happens is then they end up on my unit on one of my like on my oncology unit for example and they have no idea they have no way to express the intensity of emotion that they're dealing with there's you just can't <laughs> words aren't enough and then they don't have the tools to to go beyond that. And so that's, we, we intervene with, a, um, with adults to help reintroduce them to, um, their expression and their creativity. And it's incredibly powerful <laughs> to watch them, people who are told that they weren't talented. And then they're all of a sudden like, Oh, I'm an artist. <laughs> this is right. amazing. And then they just awesome. fall in love with it and it changes who they are. So. Awesome. Um, Costanza, um, your area of expertise, right? Um, your arts in health project. Who are they targeted to in the hospital? Do you have a particular niche you focus on in the hospital? Sure. So we started um with oncology with cancer okay. because a lot of um the patients that are admitted to hospitals dealing with cancer experience long hospital stays. So um, you know, weeks, months at a time, sometimes without going home. And, uh, the adult oncology unit is where we saw, um, there was a, a lot of need. So that's where we started, but we've since branched out. And now we work with, um, cardiac and stroke rehabilitation, um, units. Um, we're starting to work with, <clears throat> um, 
veterans with serious mental illness. We're starting, uh, we're kind of serving the whole hospital, the whole hospital, um, wherever we're needed, um, and specifically targeting healthcare staff along the way, because our healthcare staff have been, uh, pretty ground into 